Yeah. Um, I believe that you have around that fracture are, are normal cells or cells that have been slightly injured. And they are the ones that will need to be healed first before it will it will uh, it will communicate with the injured cells so that the injured cells will also recover. So just work around around the fracture and not really directly on it. Of course, it has no adverse reaction. It will not, it will not kill us, but maybe it will just take a little longer to heal. The best way is to work on the areas around it that are normally working, rest are uh, normally vibrating, and then they will communicate that, that normalcy into the injured cells and, and the body and, the, and the, that portion of the body will recover. You know, cells communicate at the molecular level. And the way they communicate is through vibrations, through energy. OK. And I'm, I'm still really confused. I wish maybe it's not you. Maybe the facilitator of this, Chris, or someone will know why it actually says not to use. I just don't understand, since this is to bring the cells into a healthy condition, why, why, they, why the manufacturers tell us not to use it on fractures? I mean, I, you know, because I know my mind makes up a big, a big difference. And so once I read that and, and got that idea you know, in my head, now I'm actually afraid to use it because I don't know if I have fractures somewhere else. Oh, that's the other question I want to know. Will it build the bone density up? My, I have bone density problems. Can this actually help to build and strengthen my bones? Maybe that's a question that's better for you. I think I, I can answer that question. I can answer that. Yes, it will work on on uh, the vibrations. Uh, our cells actually have their own vibrations. Various organs have their own vibrations. And so if they are exposed to the correct frequencies, then these cells, these tissues that make up the organs, they will heal. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, and now make, make me call uh, Uma. Yes, hi, thank you. Hello. Um, hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi, doctor. Um, I have someone on my team with breast implants. And she really wants to wand her breasts, but she is just wondering if she should do that or not because she has breast implants. Um, the literature advises us that if there are implants, you have to avoid those areas with implants. Um, actually, the, the clinical studies were that have been talked about in the presentations are on humans, but um, the device is really not designed to be used as a medical device. But this device, fortunately for us, contains the sunlight or the terahertz energy, which is the one that is doing, uh, that is, that emits the vibrations that are in resonance with our cells and it maintains our cells so that they can be healthy. And for those with implants, it is something that is not, it is not uh, a normal part of our cells, this implant. So if there is no problem with that, you can blow the device on on areas around it, but not directly on the implants. There's still so much to learn, 
about this new technology and we are just haven't scratched the surface. Yes, and thank you for that. What about her back? Like the area of her back, the upper back that's behind the breast. Can she blow it there because it goes 12 inches deep or stay away from that? I think you should stay away from that area also. Okay. You can okay. blow on the other areas. That is my assessment. My personal assessment based on the understandings that I have from my readings. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, once again, uh, Doctora. Thank you, Uma. And uh, may we know if there are still questions in the room? Are there still things that you would like to clarify? Anyway, we will still have other sessions aside from this. Yeah. So the next time you come around, there will be new cases and there will be new understandings. That's right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, Mom Juliet, yeah? Yes. Um, hello, Doctora. Hi. Yes, yeah. Mom. Good morning. Yeah. Um, I have so many invites uh, here joining us. Maybe they're just um, <laughs> not comfortable to ask questions. Okay. okay. Um, one very important here. Um, we have here, um, I won't mention her name. Uh, she just came back from um, Thailand uh, with uh, her husband uh, to treat uh, her husband's uh, Parkinson's already on stage three. She undergo, uh, he, and he underwent um, stem cell therapy. Okay, she used to be in Germany, but uh, uh, there's uh, in, uh, available in Thailand. So they went there. Okay, so first question is, um, how is it going to help uh, Parkinson's and, and to the point that it's been on stage three, the whole body is trembling and then uh, the eyes are getting uh, blurred already. And then, um, okay, the second question is, um, the wife herself, she didn't know that um, she's not the patient, but uh, being in there, she was found to have uh, autoimmune disease okay so that's the first two questions first okay um there is only one principle in the in the itera care itera care treatment it delivers vibrations when you blow when you blow the device on on areas of the body, it delivers vibrations that are in resonance with our normal cells. So if there is anything that is not normal, being a, any cell, whether it's a nerve cell, a muscle cell, or a blood cell, or a lymphoid cell that, gets, that has become sick, or ill, and it has been exposed to the frequencies of to the healing frequencies of the hyperapir energies, continuously exposing them to these energies, um, the cells will pick up the correct vibrations. A cell is sick because it is vibrating sick. It is not vibrating to the normal frequency. So that's why they are vibrating into an illness of whatever form of whichever is we are um, vulnerable to, whether it is an autoimmune or it is a chronic illness. And it also has something to do with our environment, you see? So when this, abnormally vibrating cells are exposed to the correct frequencies that are in our eye therapy device, then the cells will pick up. That They will pick up, maybe not as fast as the others would, but they would pick up, just continuously expose them 
so that the cells can recover and start vibrating at the frequency that is the normal frequency, and that is the healthy frequency. So it's the same for all kinds of illnesses. And if I may quote Hippocrates, the father of medicine, he said that all illnesses has an emotional component. You know, when you are emotional about something, um, it imprints its frequency of a negative experience imprints in us through the water in our body. Remember, water has a memory. We have learned it from quantum science that water has a memory and we are 60% water. So to get rid of those negative emotions, you have your cells have to vibrate into the positive frequencies, into the normal frequencies that gives us health. And you can do that by, by your thoughts, thinking positive thoughts, because thoughts have frequency and they can affect us greatly in healing. Yes, Doctor, it will it interfere with the, uh, the tra traditional or the Western medicine that, that they have been taking? No. It, on the other hand, it supports it supports the medical intervention. But this but this Western medicine is mostly based on the application of drugs and chemicals on our body. So it, it, they are not given for long term, but frequency medicine is something that maintains us in the normal frequency. The cells have to be, have to be maintained in the normal frequencies. And at this time in our, in our life, we have so much electro exposure to electro negative electromagnetic frequencies so that um, sunlight is not often available to us nature sunlight but for our for our we're now we're fortunate with this technology that we have ready made sunlight in our device great great thank you doctora um, actually, the, the husband had just had, had been inoculated with 13 shots of we don't know what. <laughs> it's yeah. okay. Right. These are yeah. interventions that will help the body. All right. That's good. That's good. And then two more. Um, we have here two uh, just had, that, had their um, chemo and radiation uh, after having breast cancer. But of course... Uh, it's been said to be uh, uh, reversed, but uh, what to do now? Um, you have to actually chemo, chemo and radiation. They will kill the abnormal cells, but they will also affect the normal cells. So what we will do now is to, to give support to the normal cells that have been that have been damaged by the chemotherapy and radiation. And so we will just have to expose them to the uh, low, expose them to the normal frequencies of the eye therapy so that they can heal. They can, they can vibrate to normal. We have to salvage the, the cells that have been damaged during the radiation and the chemotherapy. Okay, Chris, can I have another one? Sure, sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's me. It's my yeah. macular uh, 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 problem. And the eyes? I, I, yeah, I already had cataract surgery. So uh, I was told by Chris not to blow on the eyes. Of course, I'm not blowing. Just the, the, the around my face. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about the macular? I, I was told that in, in a matter of years, I might have problem with my... Mankela. We are, the parts of the eyes are also made up of cells that the, the macular cells, you know. So 
all we have to do is to give them a vibrating at their normal frequencies so that they stay normal. So that in whatever stage the the eye therapy device touches us, um, it will start to do its healing work. In support of our in support of our bodies. But doctor, I already had my cataract surgery, um, IOL, so there there's implants. So I cannot blow on my eyes. So where will blow. I blow? On the other areas, on the other areas of your face, maybe on the frontal area yeah, of the frontal. cheeks. Yeah. yeah. Or you can blow from from your chin and direct the, the blower upward. Because when uh, you do that, it will give you a facelift. Ah, facelift also. Okay, yes. one more, one more. Okay. Um, uh, the 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 wife is here. Uh, her husband has been uh, scheduled to have his cataract surgery. They they just would want to follow me. Yeah. Now uh, after learning about this eye therapy care, so he he would uh, defer his uh, uh, surgery. Would it be a wise decision? <laughs> uh, that decision would really depend on on the patient. But uh, the literature tells us that if you blow into your eyes, you can even look at the lights, the blue lights. That's what I learned from the presentations of Noor Rashid. Um, when you look into when the when the blue light penetrates. When you look into the blue lights, um, it will just correct the refractory, um, the refraction problems. Oh. I don't really have much experience in that, but when I learned about it from Noor, um, I started doing that. And when I blow myself every night or every other night, I look at the blue lights. And there is something I found out. Right now, I'm wearing uh, I'm wearing glasses. The left eye is 450, and the right eye is 400. The grade, the optical grade. Uh, one thing I have I have noticed that when I I used to be that when I take off my eyeglasses to be able to look around, I have to squint so that there is more focus. But ever since I started using blowing the eye teracare into my eyes, when I take off my eyeglasses, I no longer squint. Although wow. the images are still blurry because the grade is so high, but I found out that I could go around the house if I just don't have to read on small letters. I can go around the house doing my chores even without the eyeglasses. And before I could not do that because I needed to be able to see everything. So that is my limited experience on me. Wow, we get to hear from you, Doctora, when you had it checked by the uh, in the optical. Yes. <laughs> when you yes. had it checked. Okay. Uh, I sorry, Chris. There's one more, pala. Go ahead, one please. more. <laughs> yeah. Because they are here, but they don't want to ask questions. So I, I, I ask it for them. Um, constipation. That leads to colon problem. There's so many of them. Yeah. The, the intestines are inside the abdomen. Okay. And to be able for the stool, the waste, the toxins in the body to go out, the the intestines have to vibrate. They have to move. There is a, a synchronous movement for the of the intestines. After food, useful minerals are absorbed by the intestines. The debris has to be removed, and there has to be those those movements. You know, they they also vibrate. So if you blow, if you blow the the eye terra care device that delivers the normal frequencies into the cells, and then those those cells in the colon would go to work. They would be able to properly 
absorb the nutrients and the debris will have to be released. And of course, it is also important to, to eat foods that have a fiber content. Fiber. Yes. Healthy lifestyle. Okay. It really is important. Together with our device, we have to practice healthy lifestyle because that is the lifestyle that nature wants us to be. Okay. Doctor, would you say that uh, um, not identifying any uh, conditions, just blow the spine would suffice for everything? I mean, for, you know. Yes. The spine is where the, um, the vertebral column is where the spinal cord is, is housed. And then um, the spinal cord has connections to all the organs in the body. Blowing on that area alone uh, will deliver the proper frequencies to the nervous system so that the, the nervous system will work. And whatever it has to do, the brain will do its work, which is memory. The, the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, they will just have to go everyone all everything goes on and mm -hmm. they will be doing the work all right right okay wow. thank you so much dr chris thank you thank you thank you for that uh the, the beauty of what we're actually doing because even if one person asked you know multiple questions but we also got to learn all of us that are here which has probably similar concerns so thank you, Mom Juliet. And now let's go to Mary. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mary. Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good morning. I like to ask in connection with uh, Sister Juliet's uh, question uh, regarding the cataract with uh, you have lens on one eye, the other one without lens. If we blow, like, let's say for me, my lens is on the right eye, but my left eye, has cataract also, but no lens. If I blow on my left eye, will the heat go to my right eye as well, since it penetrates 12 inches deep? Um, the eyes usually sympathizes. The right eye will sympathize with the left, the left sympathizes with the right. So I don't think that would be a good thing to blow on the, on the other eye, which has no, no implant. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, where will I blow for the cataract? Um, just blow on other parts of the body. Mm -hmm. Because when the other parts of the body will become normal, then they will, they will invite, they will communicate with the, the cells that have become abnormal in vibration. So, to, they will convince the cells to vibrate, to synchronously vibrate with them in a normal manner. So let's just continue on knowing. The eye care energy is actually a gentle energy. It works immediately because of the quantum technology and it cancels out radiation. Um, but it may take some time for all the affected cells to be awakened. Mm -hmm. It depends on how long we have been carrying that chronic illness. And it will also depend on how we live our lifestyle and on the environment that we are in. If we are constantly exposed to negative electromagnetic energies, and these are things that we will have. To mm -hmm. Thank you. But how about if, uh, because I've also hypertension, uh, is any hypertension you blow at the back uh, of your neck? <laughs> Will the ray go into my eye or something like that? Because it penetrates. Eventually, eventually, it will communicate, but not directly. No? Not directly. The cells, the, cells, the cells communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. So if you blow on one portion, it will communicate its normal vibration to the rest of the cells it's nearby cells and eventually things they will pick up the normal cells uh, the, the abnormal the cells with abnormal vibrations 
they will pick up the normal vibrations of mm -hmm. the normal cells. And uh, another question, uh, how about you uh, just blow on the spine? You can blow on the spine. Um, here's here's uh here's a thing. Um, the the soles and the hands. Uh -huh. the, the soles and the hands are represented with areas in the body. So uh -huh. you know, the I think the 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 big the big toe and the rest of the the four other toes, the top of that portion represents portions in the brain. Oh. Okay, and uh, at the at the sole at the mid sole of your of your foot, there is the kidney. So if you there are there are areas in the body that are represented in our foot. So if you are not able to to blow on those areas, maybe because you have limited mobility, you can just blow on the soles of your feet or on the palms of your head. These mm -hmm. are these are represented in the various parts of our body. Okay. Uh -uh. And another question. How yes, about for uh, hyperacidity, like uh, acid reflux, can it help? Sure. In, in, in acid reflux, the abnormality is in the closure of the esophagus. Mm -hmm. There is a sphincter between the esophagus and the stomach. So the sphincter is not working. So you blow yourself on that area, mm -hmm. and whatever is abnormal, it will be it will be corrected by the by the vibrations by the normal vibrations. Actually, the the sphincter will 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 not work because something is going on. No oh. energies to support it. But if mm -hmm. you blow on that area, here comes a new set of energies, normal vibrations that will awaken those cells so that the smooth muscles, the sphincter muscles will awaken and they will go back to work. And it usually works on the cell membrane level. That is my understanding. Mm -hmm. 